Hello there, one and all, and thank you for tuning in to episode 448 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilaise, live on YouTube as always. Please do consider subscribing to this channel if you haven't already done so, and if you would like to find out how you can support my work, you should be able to see a link to my coffee page in the video description below. First comment for this video goes to Bell Boots, who says, Good afternoon, Mr. P. Maché is here as well, who says, By the way, I had a moment of clarity. And it just occurred to me that we're not using the film clapper anymore. No, we haven't used the film clapper for a while. I think that would complicate things even more if I started bringing that in. I do still have it somewhere. But remember, we didn't, we had a different name for it, didn't we? Um, it wasn't the clapper board. It was the Peggy board. It was, it was named after a, a reviewer, wasn't it? Okay. What have we got for this um, third of the four videos that we're doing today? Thank you very much for sticking around, by the way, if you have stuck around for all of them. This is a uh, brand new from Maison Crivelli, and as you can see, it is called Tubereuse Astral, Astral Tuberose. Um, I was hoping you'd do a standalone review of this, says Shan. Ah, oh, okay, well, how come? Um, and this is composed by Quentin Biche, who is always very, very busy. He has done a few for this brand already, some of uh, their interesting things. Um, so I think we've, we've got a press release. I think um, we should um, have a spray. Gavin says, you did this as a spring scent. Yes, I did, but I didn't um, do a full review of it, did I? So here we go. Um, it, it, it's interesting. It's an interesting piece of work. I think that's why I would I wanted to do it as a as a sort of standalone review. Okay, two sprays is definitely all we need. This is an extra, as you can see from the color of the bottle. Now, whoa. Okay, it it is powerful stuff. Um, Noah says I love a tuberose, so this is probably up my alley. Um, now. Let me just give me a moment to think. The very first thought that I had when I encountered this is the first thought that I'm having now, was that my mind immediately went to Osmanthus, <clears throat> because I think the first thing that you get actually from this scent um, is a kind of peachy, apricotty leatheriness. Now that kind of slightly snarling, leathery, sticky, um, characteristic of tuberose. It, it is something that we've encountered before. Uh, Christopher Sheldrake makes very, very good use of it for Serge Lutens, of course, in Tuberose Criminelle. Uh, the, the, there's a lot of sort of shades of Tuberose Criminelle in, in this, but this doesn't have those really, really kind of wild, crazy, camphoracious out overtly medicinal aspects that the Serge Lutens does. Um, but there are shades of it in the sense that, you know, th th this this could also be called tuberose criminelle. And I think, and I'm kind of cutting to the chase now, I think my main issue with it is that I, I don't get how it's astral, unless that's a little bit of an ironic name, because everything about it actually seems to be very physical, and carnal, and very much of the earth, and very much, you know, base, low center of gravity, as opposed to something that is out there in the stars on another plane. Um, I haven't read the press release, so it'll be interesting to see how the press release tries to marry the scent with the name. Um, but it, it is fascinating, and it's great to wear. Uh, so if we think, if, if if you could possibly divide tuberose perfumes into two types, which is not easy to do because they do probably fall into more than two types, but if you think about the sort of the the, the descendants of, of, of Bondi, which, no, sorry, the descendants of Fraca, which are grand divas, dramas, you know, with claws extended and, and teeth bared, Although actually, funnily enough, there is a lot of fracas in this scent as well. But anyway, no, oh gosh, I'm tired. There's a lot of Bondi in this scent. So you've got you've got those ones. But then you've also got the more naturalistic, more focused on the flower as it smells in real life, greener, fresher, more coconutty scents, like maybe Doson from Diptyque, maybe to some extent Carnal Flower from Frederick Mal, even though Carnal Flower is a diva as well. Um 
this this is definitely fracas territory. But I hadn't thought of actually until I said it until I made that you know maybe it was a Freudian slip thinking of it as a kind of combination of fracas and Bondi because it it kind of is it does away with the sort of more floral aspects of the, the you get in fracas and substitute them with substitute them with that kind of really angry kind of dark brown serrated um leather of of bondi um noah says fracas is my favorite perfume of of all time so grand it i think it's interesting the, the brand as you will know for me is is very much of the kind of hit and miss variety. There are some things from them that I really liked. I really, really liked Nero Lina Simba from last year. I like their Iris. I forget what it's called. Is it Iris Malikan? But there are some that I don't care for as much. Um, but that, that's fine. I guess it means that, it, that it's, you know, interesting to see what they do. Um, let us go to the press release, which means that I'm now really kind of just broadcasting blind because regular viewers will know I don't I don't have a kind of monitor anymore because something is up with, with YouTube. And so my press releases are on the tablet here, um, which means I can't see if everything is coming through. Anyway, uh, Maison Crivelli presents its new perfume extract, Tuberose Astral, <clears throat> developed in collaboration with perfumer Quentin Biche. With his latest opus, Thibaut Crivelli, as the founder of the brand, right, was inspired by one of his childhood memories, his experience of discovering tuberoses while observing comets and the Milky Way. As you do, right? Okay, so we're straight onto the astral plane here. <clears throat> This powerful and surprising experience inspired Thibaut to work with this white flower, a key ingredient in haute perfumery, in a whole new way. Um, tuberose astral is centered around the unexpected contrast between sparkling tuberose and the smoothness of velvety leather with hints of peach skin, hence your osmanthus. Um, we don't need to read that bit. I mean, see, this is like the image that they're going with for that. And... To me, this perfume does 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 not smell like that image. Uh, so they call it a floral leather. Uh, they say that it contains cinnamon, tuberose absolute from India, osmanthus absolute, carrot leather, cistus absolute from Spain, vanilla and musk. They reckon, or they say, I shouldn't be so cynical, but they say it's a concentrated at 32%, which is pretty high. They call it Powdery, round, bright, floral, fruity, and velvety, musky, and leathery. Let's actually get into a little bit of prose. Tuberose Astral opens with a warm, sensual, powdery note of cinnamon, enhanced by a very slight hint of cumin, an ingredient that, while imperceptible, helps to make the note even more compelling. The heart unveils three key ingredients, an Indian tuberose absolute of the finest quality, which features honeyed, creamy facets, a Chinese osmanthus absolute that completes the fragrance with its leathery, peachy quality, and carrot seed essential oil, which prolongs the creation's powdery, fruity notes. The base is centered around a leathery, velvety, musky, and vanilla accord, complemented by a touch of Indonesian patchouli and cistus absolute from Spain. I mean, it, it certainly is as heavy as that description makes it sound. It's you see, to me, I just, I just keep coming back to Earthy. And actually, even as you read that description, as you hear that description, how many of you are thinking astral? Even, even that prose doesn't seem to reflect astral, does it? Um, leathery and peachy, that's a Friday night out for me, says Paul. We're with you. Um, these ingredients give the fragrance a comforting, supple quality. See, I don't know if it's comforting. And I think it's a good thing that it's not comforting. I think actually it's more intimidating than that. While supporting the powdery floral notes of this addictive, resolutely modern composition. Um, and then a quote from Thibaut, who says, this echoes many childhood memories I had with my father, who was always passionate about astronomy. When the season was right, uh, especially in summer, we would sometimes set off at night to observe the constellations through a telescope. More often than not, we headed for a vast plain not far from home. It was an isolated spot with no light pollution. I remember that a light breeze often blew through the tall grass and crickets sang around us. Not far from us was a garden with many flowers, including tuberoses. In late summer, they gave off a fantastic scent 
at night. Now, I, I, I guess that's kind of interesting because he's sharing a very, very, very subjective, very particular experience. Um, and if, you know, if it makes people think, oh gosh, how is this astral? Maybe that's no bad thing. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm still, still sort of curious about it. And then uh, some quotes from Quentin Biche, who says, I began by honing my tuberose to make it as natural as possible, working on its petals, its freshness, and its very distinct sensuality. Then the leather and its animalic amber facets made things very dark. See, there you go, he's saying it's dark. I had to strike a balance, maintaining the purity of the scent so that neither the flower nor the leather took on too much light. Yeah, see, I mean, I think I'm, I'm with him on this. Um, and that's... Well, there you go. So so Quentin Biche has been asked to describe this perfume in three words, and he's gone for the words angel, demon, addiction. Now, to me, that's not comforting, and that's not necessarily a, a kind of gently nostalgic memory of looking up at the Milky Way when you're a child. But, the, you know, it still is... Very, very, you know, that doesn't make it any less interesting as a piece of work. Um, and uh, it initially started off as an exclusive to Harvey Nicks, but um, I believe then it is going um, wherever Crivelli scents are available. Just bear with me while I go back to the tablet to see what is going on. What have you folks been saying about it? Um, not comforting at all, says Power Connection. Um, Seems all over the place, says Maudlin, but the smell isn't. The smell is really, really not all over the place. It's very, very, very consistent in that musky, dark, patchouli-ish, leathery tuberose feel. Um, Shabir says, I can't seem to like this brand beyond the first hour. Have tested a few of their perfumes in Selfridges a couple of times. Okay, thank you for giving me that nudge, because we do, of course, have a pre-sprayed blotter, he said confidently. There we go. Um, now, here comes the warning. Yeah, the, the the tuberose leather musky woody thing is sustained extremely well. I mean, really, really as expertly as you would expect it to be handled by anybody with the skill and the talent and the caliber and the training of, of Quentin Biche. But if you wait long enough, if you are patient enough with your blotter, you will discover that at the very, very, very end, you have got, and I'm just going to whisper this, you have got, because I know a lot of you get very, very upset when you hear this, but you have got some ambery woods, okay? Now, don't panic, don't freak out, because I don't think the ambery woods are all that detectable when you are um, wearing the scent, unless, of course, you're hyperosmic to them, hypersensitive to them, um, but they are there. Um, <laughs> and I guess that's all I can say about that. That, I, that. that They're probably there because they are giving that sense of darkness. You know, Quentin Biche wouldn't be Quentin Biche if he didn't use some woody ambers, if he didn't put some Akigala wood in there. So those things are in there. If you are hypersensitive to them, um, then you have been given fair warning, but rest assured, they have not been overdosed in any way near the same way that they are in some other... Oh, Max40 with a tick says, hello, one and all. Um, I hope that really is you, Max, because I know that there are some sort of fake profiles out there, but nice to see your name pop up if it is you. I hope you're well. Um, Tamara says, I am hypersensitive to Amber Woods. Gavin says... Uh, Luca Turin, in the recent stream, named his personal pet hate um, or something at present. He said Amber Woods. Yeah, because they're just used to death. You know, it's, it's just it's just so lazy. And it's also a real shame because as materials, they are amazing. They absolutely have their place in perfumery, but they're just not being used properly. They're being overused. Anyway, despite that, despite that caveat, Absolutely one of the better ones, one of the more interesting ones, I think, from Maison Crivelli. And and um, an unexpectedly kind of growling take on tuberose for something released at this juncture in the 21st century. Thank you very much for watching. We are going to be back 
um, in a few minutes with a showcase of a brand that I think a lot of you uh, will know quite well. Anyway, see you in a bit. Bye now.